Hello, my name is Sajid Sahadevan. I'm the Senior Product Marketing Manager for Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Field Service. And joining me today for this Blitz session is Ben Warmer, the Global Sales Lead for Field Service. Today, we are going to talk about Dynamics 365 for Field Service and how we innovate with proactive service. This session will give you a quick recap on field service capabilities and introduce a few new ones with our latest release. And Ben will showcase these capabilities by demoing them. With Dynamics 365 for Field Service, we deliver a seamless end-to-end -end experience that will help resolve service issues before they occur, reduce operational costs, and deliver positive on-site experiences. Now, when you think of field service, it is important to remember that field service is not just break fix repair, but also includes installation and maintenance services. Now, let's talk about the key features of Dynamics 365 for field service. Let's start at the top left. With service agreements, you can maintain the accuracy of service contracts, warranties, and installed products. The schedule and the dispatch functionality allows you to create and optimize the best schedule while assigning the right technician for the job. We also have the inventory management function where you can synchronize inventory, reorder points, and track inventory down to the truck level. The mobile capabilities within field service helps technicians have full access to customer data, the steps to complete the job, collaborate with other experts, and also the ability to upsell a service. With connected field service, you can use IoT to detect, troubleshoot, and resolve issues remotely so technician is dispatched only when necessary. And finally, with a customer-centric experience, you can keep your customers informed in multiple ways to ensure a positive interaction at every step. Field service business application also fits nicely into Dynamics 365. A few intelligent business scenarios to field service include using the same resource pool for shorter, long-term projects with project service automation. Extending customer service to the field when there is a need for on-site help. Providing technicians the ability to upsell and cross-sell and the tools to execute on the opportunity using the sales business app. I would encourage you to identify and apply additional use cases for field service across industries and business functions. At the heart of the field service is the ability to schedule and dispatch a field technician. Using the drag and drop schedule board allows dispatchers to assign resources and set up schedules for multiple work orders using a map or a list view. New scheduling capabilities help technicians and project workers optimize project operations and enhance resource efficiency. New in this release is the interactive schedule board where you can easily substitute a resource. Also, the unified scheduling capabilities have been extended to enhance the resource assignment and allocation capabilities. We now have filters, which provides advanced filtering capability using custom attributes to support any customer business processes. We will have Ben walk you through the interactive schedule board and talk about how filters work. He'll also demo this functionality within resource scheduling optimization. Thanks, Sajith. Dynamics 365 field service has multiple personas that we see used every day. One of the ones we start off with generally is that of a dispatcher, somebody who's going to take the technicians, actually somebody to do the work orders to complete the work. That's really the heart and soul of most field service organizations. So we're going to start off today showing you the schedule board and some improvements and enhancements we've made to the schedule board to make it better for the dispatchers. The first thing you're going to see over here on the left-hand side is you're going to see it, we've added filters. Filters allow us to look for resources that have certain characteristics that we have defined. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on filters today, but there's a lot of great stuff here in filters. But the first thing you're going to notice here, though, is I have a big problem with my schedule board. What's that problem? It's blank. So let's go fill it up. So up until now, the problem has been getting the right resource to the right place at the right time has involved a lot of work. It usually involves people trying to figure out where people are at, how long it takes them to get there, et cetera. With the NX35 field service, we have this option called resource scheduling optimization. RSO takes a number of skills and constraints into effect and helps me build a schedule that works the best 
for my organization and my technicians and their skills. So you saw an empty schedule board. Now we're just gonna fill that schedule board up. I have a number of unscheduled work orders out there. I go ahead and click run now here. This could normally run and would normally run in the background of my users um, on a scheduled basis. I come up here to schedule board. Again, you still see that it is, it is blank. If I refresh my schedule board, one of the enhancements made to RSO, or resource content optimization, in the fall release was the ability to look at or simulate what's going to happen with RSO. So I'm clicking on here again, and you'll see that those, those activities and work orders will now get scheduled for me automatically. So you'll notice the work order that's in white here, that's actually a simulated work order. So resource scheduling optimization is actually putting the work orders on the schedule board to make the most amount of sense for the skills my technicians have, as well as where they're going and what they're doing um, before it actually hard puts them in place. So if we refresh the schedule board one more time here, you'll notice that those tickets will go from being white to being blue, which is when the, those tickets have actually then, or work orders have actually been then scheduled um, through the simulator and actually have completed the schedule for the work order. So as you can see, resource guide optimization has taken those work orders, put them in place, and given me a schedule for my technicians. Now occasionally, th there are some errors that happen um, in any business. Um, employees call in sick, somebody's car breaks down, something happens where a technician can't get out to the job site in the time we promised them in. So one of the enhancements made to the schedule board um, that's available now for us to use here, if I right click on a ticket, I can now substitute resources. So I can say, you know what? Uh, Jorge is not available. We're gonna assign this to Ashley. I'm gonna click the reassign button. So I can now, using the schedule board, as a t dispatcher, move tickets between resources very quickly and easily to have them go through what before was a fairly manual, laborious process. No matter what devices use, organizations can leverage native mobile applications to provide real-time data and gain visibility into customer information to improve field processes and increase technician productivity. In this release, new mobile capabilities provide field technicians with a simplified user interface for servicing work orders and managing asset information. Technologies like artificial intelligence, IoT, and mixed reality accurately inform and guide technicians throughout the service engagement. Now Ben will show you what the resource hub for mobile looks like. Thanks, Sajith. So as a technician, I live and die by my phone. My mobile device is really how I get my work orders, is how I communicate with the outside world. It's really my lifeline back to the office. It's estimated about 85% of mobile technicians do not have access to a computer. This is really my computer, this is my office. We've reimagined the mobile experience Dynamics 365 Mobile with the ability of adding field service and the field service hub as one of the apps in Dynamics 365 in the fall release. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna walk you through what that looks like from a user experience. So as you can see here, here are all of my bookings that I have access to that are mine. Um, as you can see, I have a lot because I'm, I'm working a lot here, but if I click on one of my bookings, it gives me a number of information. What's the work order? Who's the account? And I can, again, I can configure this all like I can today. I can also do things like take signature capture. Okay. But create a new booking here. Or I can go back. I can scroll all the way down the bottom here. So you can see there's things like how long do I schedule? How many miles did I travel? What parts did I use? What service tasks do I have? I can also do things like take pictures. So here I am on my mobile client. Take a picture of my IoT device. I'll use that picture. I'm not gonna add that as a note directly to the record. So as a technician, I now have in my hand access to field service data quickly and easily that I can get access to, that I can modify, and that I can configure in the same configuration engine you're using today in Dynamics 365 Mobile. But mobile is just one part of the story. What if I got out on jobs and I need help from somebody else? So mobile technician enablement is a huge part of any field service technician's life. We've enabled that between the spring release and now with the ability of adding Dynamics 365 Field Service Mobile into the holographic store for the HoloLens and mixed reality headsets. So if I'm a technician, 
and I put on my Mixed Reality headset, I now have access to Dynamics 365 Field Service Mobile. I have access to Skype, where I can then Skype and they can actually annotate the screen and I can see me at the same time. I also have access to the, all the rich holographic information that's available for me on this. This is the HoloLens, but it also works equally well on Mixed Reality headsets. So in this fall release, we've made some major enhancements to Dynamics 365 the mobile client that impacts both field service technicians as well as in empowering them to reach back out for help. Our connected field service solution enables better outcomes with IoT. It enables a field service organization to detect, troubleshoot, and resolve issues remotely so a technician is dispatched only when necessary. With this release, we have simplified the provisioning of Azure resources and importing of IoT Hub devices. This will help adoption of connected field service capabilities in your field service organization, streamline the process of deploying remote monitoring and predictive maintenance. Ben will now show you how you can import IoT Hub devices into existing Azure. Dynamics 365 field service allows for and enables a connection, the industry leading Azure IoT Hub and the entire Azure IoT suite of services. This allows customers to be able to connect their devices directly to Azure, use machine learning to look for anomalies, to predict failures, to do preventive maintenance, and then raise those alerts into Dynamics 365 to have a technician actually take action on those items. We've made some major enhancements to Dynamics 365 field service around our connection between field service and Azure. One of the biggest ways we've done that has been the addition of adding, being able to add Dynamics 365 connected field service into an existing Azure resource group. This means if your customer already has IoT Hub deployed, we can now deploy connected field service in that same resource group to get the alert data and turn those alerts into action. And as Sajith mentioned earlier, one of the things we have the ability to do now is when you create devices in IoT Hub, they now get automatically created in Dynamics 365 as connected devices. This allows for a seamless transition and less work on behalf of our customers. So let's show how some of this works. Let's go ahead and open up one of our customer assets. I'm going to give it a device ID. and I'm not going to register that device. This is now being registered in Azure IoT Hub as a device. That same piece, though, works the opposite direction. So if I register the device in IoT Hub through a programmatic method through my existing onboarding systems, whatever I currently use today, they'll be created in Dynamics 365 as connected devices. So here I am in my Azure portal. And as you can see here, I have one device currently. If I scroll down, there would be more of my devices that would appear here automatically. So you can see I have both my devices are now here and enabled. So no matter which way I do my devices, they now show up in connected field service. This allows for lots of scenarios. Out of the box, of course, we show the, the temperature simulator. Refresh this here. There's my new device. Now I'm going to set the temperature. But you can also enable this with physical items. Here's a physical item that allows you to click a button and it goes into IoT Hub. Or here's a sensor that has a temperature and humidity on it that'll do the exact same thing. So you're not just limited just to the simulator here, but with Dynamics 365 field service with this connection to IoT Hub, any IoT Hub connected device can get data and anomaly data in Dynamics 365 quickly and easily. We introduced portals in our spring release. Let me take a moment to highlight some of the key features of the portal functionality. The online customer portal gives customers full visibility into all service interactions, including work orders, assets, and IoT alerts. With new customer communication features, organizations can send outbound tests and automated phone call reminders. Additionally, we have released functionality that allows customers to see the actual technician location and the ETA on a map. Let's have Ben show us some of the salient features of the portal. Thanks, Sajith. Now, portals are important because they allow our partners and our customers to have access to data coming out of Dynamics 365. 
What we're gonna show you today is actually two things. One is what is available out of the box, but two is actually how you do it. So we're gonna start off with how you do it. So if you go in the admin center of Dynamics 365, you'll see your applications. Here is my partner instance. I'm gonna click manage. One of the available options for me here then is adding both field service as well as PSA to the portal. This will allow me to be able to have access to the data for my partners in a secure manner. And I set the security constraints up after the fact. Dynamics 3C5 field service portal is available in the partner portal today. Let's go now look at that, see what it looks like. So here's my home portal, as you can see, um, my dashboard with primarily opportunity data. But you'll notice what's been added to the top of the menu there has been PSA as well as field service. I'm gonna click on field service here, take you home. You're gonna see a number of different things we have access to now. You can extend these using standard portal functionality to add additional entities or additional objects your, your customer wants to have access to. Let's click on field service here. As I have data in my CRM system, it'll now be displayed in the portal. So you see I have access to agreements, assets, work orders, invoices, as well as um, active and inactive for both of those. So a lot of the data that me as a customer wants to have access to from our field service solution, we've now packaged up and built as a pre-built solution that you can then extend to your customer's exact needs. Thank you, Ben. That was really enlightening. In closing, here are some of the follow-up actions for you. Continue to familiarize yourself with the new capabilities for Dynamics 365 for field service. Leverage the bomb assets available on Infopedia and the Partner Portal. Direct your customers and prospects to the Content Hub. Engage your global black belt resources. And most importantly, be a Microsoft Dynamics 365 evangelist. Thank you.